Chris Russo here. In this video, we're going to talk about um, HMO officers and the visits that you get after um, you apply for a license. Now, first of all, um, all these visits are... Um, you've got to know what you have to comply with, uh, number one. Um, the, we should be making some manuals so that you know what to comply with but number one you have to comply with fire regulation which is very very easy you have to comply with um, HMO standards in terms of space standards and number of sockets in each room number of sockets in um, in the kitchen the number of cookers and so on depending on the number of uh, rooms that you have available to let in the house so but that this is a, a topic that we're going to touch in um, touch on later on. But in this particular video we're going to talk about um, the visits of the HMO officers. Number one, you have to realise that um, they cannot do much. The HMO officers, they cannot do much. They cannot fine you, they cannot do pretty much uh, anything. Un well, unless you have an HMO that you have run without uh, compliance with fire regs and so on for a long time then it could be a bit troublesome. Now, the um, you shall not have anything to worry about because at the end of the day, they cannot fine you. Um, in order to issue any fines, they have to get that done through the magistrate courts. And that is very hard to do. It's very expensive and it's not worth the candle most of the times. So they can, uh, in worst case scenario, can send you some, um, some, some orders that you should comply with. Otherwise, you're not going to be, uh, they're not going to declare your house uh, unlettable. And then if you let it, then they can uh, prosecute you and so on, this sort of things. But it's not as if they come and they can order you whatever and then, or define you to whatever else. So, so that's number one. They cannot find you, so you can rest assured that nothing is going to happen that is untowards, as long as you have applied for license and you're pretty much compliant with most of the things. Um, now, then they can, what they do, they make reports saying that you've got hazards. Now, lately, they call it hazards level. And they all, everything is hazard level number one. People are going to freaking die and all that. It's bull crap. So they're going to list everything the top hazard level, even things that make no sense whatsoever. And I can give you many examples, but we're not going to delve into that in this video. Um, now, I suggest you comply with everything they ask you for, unless they declare a room uninhabitable, um, or um, you think that whatever they ask you for is untowards. I'll give you, give you some examples. One, uh, when uh, an HMO officer has attempted to make declare one room uninhabitable because it had uh, the boiler in the loft. Um, that that pretty much never flew. Um, the way I've um, I, I fought it is by sending sending an email saying, "Look, send me the law where that is that makes that possible." Uh, obviously, he couldn't find it, and. Also, I pointed out that if it were the case that you cannot let a room where you need access for maintenance, because his, his argument was, it wasn't an argument of law, it was just an argument, he just made it up as he went along, is that if um, maintenance is needed in order to, um, access to the room is, not, is needed in terms of maintain the system in the house, any working system in the house, then that room shall not be let. The problem is that any, almost any HMO room um, has got a smoke detector needs to be maintained. So that argument fell apart immediately and there's no any law that he was using. I was just making it up. And you'll find many, many times that HMO officers and also fire brigades make things up. They completely make things up. And in order to counteract, counteract it, if it's something really cam uh, cumbersome, is just say, look, send me the law where Actually, don't send me the the actual law where it is stated what you're what you're actually suggesting. And what they normally do is send you the um, Housing Act 20, 2004 said so refer to that, but there's nothing saying 
nothing to refer in that in that legislation to what they uh, they want you to do. So to that, so you just refer. Well, there's nothing there. You're just making it up. Simply, I just say it. You're just making it up because there's nothing there that suggests that. Um, in another occasion, um, it was quite recent. Uh, we had a fire brigade coming around with uh, the, um, the, uh, the 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 officer, stating that I had to use a fire door in a cupboard that was covering up the um, the um, the electric meter and the electrical panel. So to that, I and I had to lock it up. To that, I said, well. Number one, there's no law that I should actually even use any covering of that. Many HMOs and many houses have got that panel accessible without any any boxing in. And pretty much also, you're asking me to put a pa fire panel uh, where the boxing in is not fire rated anyway. So what you're asking does not make sense. By the way, send me the law where it is required to box in uh, in a fire rated boxing any fire any electrical panel and meter and then we'll talk about it because if there is such law exists all HMOs and all rented properties need to have that compliant and there's none around that are compliant almost none that I know actually none that I know of so that went away um, as well so many many things that they ask for were completely made up completely utterly made up but if they ask you to paint a room it doesn't really cost you anything to do it. it's also good for for the uh, for the premises so my name is Andreas Rosso I have lots of experience of dealing with these um, very unintelligent people uh, I have got uh, some, some of them are quite good but if they're good they're gonna just fly away and and just get promoted or get a better job anywhere else. So, but usually what you find in the in the council is that unfortunately 60% of them are really useless. I mean, I know the legislation better than I do and they do this for a living. Uh, I don't do just this for a living, I do many other things. So I hope that uh, you found it useful and should you know more, get in touch with us. Aritam Limited and Andreas Russo, the owner and that's it.